Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. For those of you new here, hello, my name is Skylar. I'm a certified dog trainer and pet nutritionist. As a dog trainer, the majority of my clients are private and home training clients. This means I go to their home and we work on anything from puppy preschool basics, to service tasks, to reactivity and aggression. And one of the things I get asked to help with often is door greetings. So whether you have a dog that's a bolter, likes to jump on guests, or is generally just always in the way when you're trying to open the door, here are a few things to try and add into your training routine to make door greetings that much easier. The number one most important thing that you need to do when we're working on door greetings with your dog is to decide what you want your dog to do. A lot of times, just in general, when we're working with our dogs, we focus on the negatives. We list all of the things that we don't want them to do, the things that bug us, the things that really get on our nerves, the things that we want to stop happening. And while we all have definitely felt frustrated by our dogs, this doesn't actually get us closer to teaching them the things that we do want them to do. One of the very first questions that I ask my clients when we're addressing this topic is, in a perfect world, what would your dog be doing when friends come over to visit? This creates a much better idea of what we need to work on because it allows you to really think about what we want the end goal to be. And I want you to get as specific as possible with this. For example, when guests come over, I want my dog to stay calm. I want them to go and sit in their bed. I want them to stay in their bed while guests come through the door until the door is closed. And I want to have a word or phrase that lets them know they can come greet my guests in order to allow my guests to have time to put their bags down or take their shoes off. This creates a really clear plan of all of the things that we need to work on in order to get to that point. Number two is we want to be able to practice the new behaviors that we would prefer without the guests being there. If the only time we ever practice door greetings is when something's actually happening, the postman is actually dropping off a package, your guests are coming over for the holidays, we're setting ourselves up for failure in a way. And when we're training, we wanna set our dogs and ourselves up for success by making things as easy as possible and kind of dipping our toe into things. One of the very first things we do to get started is desensitizing our dogs to the sound of knocking or the doorbell. Usually your dog is used to a knock the door, meaning that someone is at the door. And to their credit, that's a fair assumption. Usually up until this point, a knock the door does mean that someone's at the door. Oftentimes, because they have that association, they hear a knock at the door and they get super, super excited. And the more excited they are, the harder it is for them to actually be able to do the sit and the stay and all of those things. And it can just make it really, really hectic. So one of the very first things that I do with my clients is practicing knocking on a wall immediately tossing some treats. And what that does is it starts to create the association that a knock means come find whoever's training you and get your treats for it instead of barking and going crazy. It also makes the knock less valuable. Now the knock is boring because nine times out of ten it's just dad over in the corner knocking on a wall being weird as opposed to oh my gosh my new shipment of dog foods here. Number three, once you're finally ready to start opening the door or adding people into the mix, you want to set yourself up for success and have a safety measure in place so that your dog is less able or unable to practice the undesired behavior. This can look differently depending on your training goals, your household setup, your dog, and what element of the training you're working on. For example, if right now you're at a level where you just want the door open and your dog not to rush through it and stay in their bed or whatever the case may be, a baby gate can be a really helpful way of making sure that they can't successfully get out of the door in case the training fails. A leash is another good option. A leash is also a great option for when you actually are ready to start having guests come over. If we don't want our dog jumping up on grandma, then we need to keep the dog away from grandma because if we get too close, it might be too exciting of a situation for the training and progress to work the way we want it to. If you have a partner at home or someone who's able to help with these kinds of greetings, that makes the situation so much easier. You can focus on opening the door and letting your guest in, while a couple feet away, you can have a training partner with a leash hanging onto your dog to help just in case the training fails. We've done all of this practice, but sometimes it just doesn't go as planned when we start adding more variables into the mix. By having your dog on leash, it helps to prevent them from running up and jumping on your guests and practicing that behavior. Number four, Toss treats when you get home to help prevent your dog from jumping up on you. Oftentimes, really, really excited dogs are sometimes 
too excited that you're home and didn't abandon them to even do the things that you ask. Sometimes the very first stage of training is just getting that energy level down to a couple notches to a point where you can actually get through to them and they can successfully sit or stay. One of the ways that we do this in the very beginning of training is simply by tossing treats back and forth. If you toss a treat that way, your dog runs that way to eat it, and if they're 10 feet away from you, they can't jump up on you. As they run back towards you, let them get within three, four feet, toss another treat, have your dog run back. This running back and forth allows us to get through the door safely, to maybe take our shoes off, put our bags down. It also helps our dog run off some of that initial energy of, oh my gosh, you're home. And typically after two or three times back and forth, they're calmed down enough that you can ask for a sit, or you can ask for a down, or you can ask for whatever replacement behavior we're trying to use, as opposed to them going absolutely crazy and jumping up on you. And last but not least, if things are too hectic to be a positive training experience, then don't make it a training experience. This is one especially around the holidays or birthdays or barbecues coming up in the summer or really any time where the real life situation is too hard for your training level and where you're at in that training. If we allow our dogs to be in these situations where we know they're probably not gonna be successful, we're frustrating ourselves, we're sometimes frustrating our guests, and more importantly, we're allowing our dog to practice the behaviors that we do not want them to be doing. So one of the ways that we fix this is through management strategies. Maybe if you have a bunch of guests coming over and they're all gonna be coming over, you know, one after the next for the next 30 minutes, then maybe your dog goes into a kennel or they go outside or they go into another room. So that way you just don't have to deal with them in that context. This is also really great information for us because it lets us know that that situation, way too hard. It can be a goal that we work up to, but maybe instead of five people back to back coming through the door with only a couple minutes in between, we start with one person and work our way up. If you enjoyed this short training tip, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. We do a lot of dog training and behavior stuff on here. If there's any other topics that you would like me to cover in quick training tip form, leave that in the comments down below. And if you have tried any of these techniques, also let me know how it worked for you. I hope that this made training a little bit easier for you and good luck in your next training session. I will see you in my next video. Bye.